This 35-year-old Peugeot, however, isn't. This is a great Peugeot, the 504 Estate. It was built to conquer Africa. It was as rugged and as dependable as a Maasai warrior. But it was also quite a bit more practical than a Maasai warrior, so it conquered quite a bit of urban Europe as well. Later, Peugeot stopped making cars for Africa and came up with this. A car for the complex at Croft. I remember thinking back in the late 70s, there would never be a hot hatchback as good as a Golf GTI. This was, though. The expression, joie de vivre, you're probably familiar with it. It's French for Peugeot 205 GTI. So, if you were buying a Peugeot, you would expect a blend of these qualities. Toughness, ruggedness, forged on the anvil of Africa, and peppy, puppy dog enthusiasm. But, no. Today's Peugeots are a sea of awfulness. And rising to the top of this cesspit of utter woefulness is this, the Peugeot 308. Diesel. Diesel. Let's unpack this pile of peur de chien, actually. We'll start with its face. Because, admittedly, this isn't the biggest gob we've seen on a Peugeot in recent years, but it isn't small enough. And it's like one of those local councillors' faces, do you know what I mean? Promising a lot, but delivering nothing. The ride, for example, OK, it's quite firm in an un-French sort of way, and yet it handles like a big bag of damp laundry. It feels all weighty and turgid. The controls feel turgid. But, James, if I may... You may. The modern-day Peugeot does provide a valuable public service. How does it? Because in the 70s, all bad drivers had Volvo. So you saw a Volvo, you knew it was being driven by someone who couldn't drive very well. And just because it was in the left lane, indicating left, didn't necessarily mean it was actually going to turn left. Yes. Then Volvo started making good cars, so the bad drivers migrated to Rover. Then Rover went bust, so all the people who were buying Rovers are now in Peugeots. Yes, yes. So it's actually, they're quite useful. I was teaching my daughter to drive the other day, and she went, now, mirror, I said, never mind mirror signal manoeuvre. The first thing you have to know as a new driver is, see a Peugeot, just cover the brake pedal. We asked Tuck Yorkshire Stig to test it for us, and this was his response. This car, then, meets all of our criteria for the title of worst car in the world. It's not very nice to drive, it's not very nice to look at, it doesn't appear to be very well made, it's no cheaper than its vastly superior rivals, it's not very comfortable, nor is it very fast. It's made by a manufacturer that really should know better. It's lazy, it's slovenly, it's unimaginative, and we hate it.